Uh, hello, beautiful queens. Uh, it's Namakosam Kize. It's the 9th of August, Women's Day. Um, it's our day of queening, honestly. And I'm wearing my crown. I got this crown from my neighbor's child. Do too. I hope she watches so that she'll see this uh, crown. Queens. South African queens, I'm coming to you yet again today. Uh, earlier, I came with a poem, Still I Rise, by Maya Angelou. I was just trying to encourage us to say, no matter the circumstances or the situations, let us please rise. So, you know, I thought of something. Right now, I'm coming to you. I'm not sure whether I'm coming with a speech or with a talk, or with a thought. But can I just share these words with you? I believe that there is power in telling our own stories. There is power in telling our stories. Today I will tell you my story. Um, I'm Lema Keza. I'm a transformation coach. I got married at the age of 24 and the marriage ended at the age of uh, 35. But I just want to let you in to my marriage a bit because I want to encourage someone who is going through the same thing that I went through. Uh, because my talk today is go fetch yourself. I think it was in my fourth year of marriage I've shared this earlier in one of my clips. Um, Hubby Dearest um, came to me. We were just having a, a, you know, just an informal chat. It wasn't much of a fight. We were just talking. And then, you know, out of a blue, she, he's, he said to me, um, Sissy, you know what? Tombazan, okay, he called me Tombazan. Tombazan, yam. Listen here, umubi. Listen to me. Let me spell it out to you. Umubi. I was perplexed. You are ugly. Maybe people lie to you outside there. You are ugly. Take it from me. I was shocked. Why was I shocked? This is a person who, this is habit dearest. We've been married something like four years. Uh, this is a person who spends... 25 hours with me. I think I shared it in one of the clips. But when this person says to me, I'm ugly, I believed him. I believed him. And let me tell you something. At that time, it just got straight into my heart, into my mind, into my soul that I'm ugly. I would go around see other women they are beautiful i'm ugly why because my husband told me so and at that time queens ladies bosses both at the wait at that time i lost myself i fully believed that i was ugly because i was told by my husband that i'm ugly let me tell you another story. I think it was the sixth year of marriage. So, you know, we, we had some challenges. You know how marriages are. So, happy dearest, you know, there's one thing that we always said to each other. We always said that, you know what, no matter what happens, divorce is not an option. That is what we promised ourselves. We always said, no matter what happens, divorce is not an option. So, uh, we had some challenges, so he said to me he was going to call his brothers to come so that we'll try and solve, you know, the, the problem that we we're facing at the time. The brothers came with their wives, two brothers with their wives, okay? I think I had it, my son was two months old at the time, one month or two months old at the time. So the brothers came, uh, we discussed the problem in hot of you. So I only realized at the time that the, 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 the story that he told them, 
wasn't a true story. So I was coming up with the true story. And for some reason, there was evidence that I had to give that, no, it's not like that. It's, it's like this here is the evidence, okay? So the moment he realized that now, because they were saying, no, but this is not what your husband told us. We came here because he said one, two, three, four, five. So I was giving evidence to say, it's not like that. This is the truth, telling my truth. So the moment he realized that he wasn't winning, he just stood up and he said, I am tired of this marriage. This woman has been abusing me ever since we got married. I'm not happy in this marriage. I can't take this anymore. I want a divorce. I was shocked. I was shocked. So the whole ambience changed now. Uh, you know, the brothers with their wives who were sort of getting what I was saying changed immediately. Because they, now suddenly they realize that this man is not happy. This man has been unhappy for some time. The whole thing just changed. And I was all alone. Everybody was looking at me like, there's something wrong with this woman. I was all alone. I lost myself. I can't even begin to explain to you how lost I just lost myself because I realized that my husband wants to divorce me. So for the longest time, I was fighting for him to see that I'm not that bad. You know, I may not necessarily be beautiful, but I'm not that bad. For the longest time, I was fighting for him not to divorce me. Because now he told his brothers that he was going to divorce me. And I wanted to prove to him that, no, you can't divorce me. I'm a good wife. So I lost myself. So today I'm sharing this, this story with you because it's possible that you are in a marriage. You've lost yourself because of things that are happening there. So ladies, today I'm saying to you, queens, dearest queens, on the 9th of August, go fetch yourself. It may not necessarily be a good message for this season, but I just hope that it helps at least one, one queen, one queen. Go fetch yourself. It's a speech, it's a talk, it's a thought. So I want to throw a few words of encouragement as we celebrate Women's Day today. The title of my speech or my talk or my thought is Go Fetch Yourself. Queens, we live in a patriarchal society that emphasizes the power of men and diminishes our own power, our own strength, our own worth, and the purpose of our existence. So in the journey of life, it becomes easy for us to lose ourselves. Today, we are saying, go fetch yourself. The question is, where do you fetch yourself from? I'm reading an informative book by Dr. Darius Daniels. The title of the book is Re uh, Relational Intelligence. Dr. Darius Daniels defines relational intelligence as the ability to, di to discern if someone should be a part of our lives and what place they should occupy and then align them accordingly. He calls this putting people in their place. Our lives are about relationships at home, at work, in church, in the community, everywhere we live. We live with people by relating with them. So Dr. Darius Daniel says, there are people who are supposed to occupy your front seat in your life, occupy uh, the back seat in your life, but sometimes we take people from the back seat, put them in the front seat. And they speak into our lives and they frustrate us. We take people from uh, the front seat to the back seat. So we need to place people uh, accordingly so that we will be able to reach our fullest potential because relationships affect us. Whether you like it or not, whatever relationship you are in, it's either affecting you or influencing you positively or negatively. The question that I asked was, where do you fetch yourself from? Let's talk about our marriages. I've just given you an example of my own marriage where I lost myself for years. It took me time to go fetch myself from the fact that I was ugly, to go fetch myself from the fact that I have to fight for my husband not to divorce me. Let's talk about our marriages. 
Some of us are in marriages where you are not seen. You are not recognized. Every time you have to fight to be seen by your husband. You have to fight to be recognized by your husband as a significant other. This takes a lot from you. As you fight to be seen and be recognized, you lose yourself. So today, queens, I'm saying, go fetch yourself. Yes, you are in a marriage, but dig deeper into your inner being and fetch yourself. Some of us are told in our marriages by our own husbands that you are useless, you are unworthy, you are not beautiful like other women, you are fat, you are stupid, you can't please a man. You are not good in bed. Yes, I'm talking about sex. Yes, I'm talking about life, love making. We are told that you cannot please a man. So you lose yourself. You are trying so hard to fulfill these needs that seem to be lacking as put by your husband. See, see, that they wait. Dearest queen, go fetch yourself. You are worth it. Do not embrace those words. Tell yourself that I'm a woman of worth. Go fetch yourself. Remind yourself of your worth. Remind yourself of your significance. Remind yourself of your value. Your worth, your value, your significance is not pinned to your husband. It has to come from within. Some women have no voice in their marriages, no voice whatsoever. Your men... Uh, does not want to take your opinions, your suggestions, and your inputs. He would rather listen to everyone else, hear the voice of everyone else, but your voice. This makes you want to shout to be heard until you lose yourself. And even when you shout, he will ask you, why are you shouting? So CSC, dearest queen, go fetch yourself. Go fetch yourself. Make sure that your voice is heard without you fighting, without you screaming, but ensure that your voice is heard. But more than anything else, go fetch yourself. You have inner strength to fetch yourself. Some marriages totally diminish us until we lose the little thread of worth that we're holding on. Recognize your sense of loss, sissy, queen, and go fetch yourself. Yes, you are within your marriage. You are married. You are married to your husband, but you are being diminished. Identify that and go fetch yourself. Let's talk about ex-husbands. Some of us have been divorced for years, but we're still living in the shadow of how our ex-husbands treated us. You've been divorced for 20 years, but you're still aching at the way your husband treated you, Sissy, please go fetch yourself. And you realize sometimes that your husband has moved on, but you are still stuck. Go fetch yourself. Some of us still live in the shadow of the words that were said by our husbands 5, 10, 20 years ago, as I gave you an example earlier. Sissy, go fetch yourself. You cannot move from that that was said, what was said by your husband. But I'm saying today, shake those words off and go fetch yourself so that you live your fullest life. Some still reminisce about what would have been if you were still married. That takes its toll on you because ex habit dearest has moved on. If you're still holding on to what could have been, you are giving him power over you. Go fetch yourself. We call them ex-husbands because they are ex-husbands. So don't leave your life in the shadow of your ex-husband because he's not even thinking about you, Sissy. He has moved on, moved on. Go fetch yourself. You cannot allow him to control your life like that. There is a lot for you to accomplish in life. Forget about ex-hubby. Go fetch yourself. Let me talk about ex-boyfriends and current boyfriends. You know, here I really want to talk to our young stars, to our young adults, our girls, our beautiful girls, our beautiful princesses, 
I want to talk to you. Some of you are in relationships with boyfriends who do not even value you. They don't value you. They, don't, they do not appreciate you. They do not treasure you. They constantly cheat on you. You keep forgiving them and hoping that they will change. They abuse you verbally. You persevere. They abuse you mentally. You persevere. They abuse you emotionally. You persevere. They abuse you physically. You persevere. You even lie and say that, no, this is not a blue eye. I hit myself with something. You remain in their relationship, hoping that they are going to change. Some boyfriends gaslight you. You still hope for the better. The ex-boyfriends still come back to you. You forgive them. They lie to you. They cheat. They do what they say whatever to you. Sisi, young lady, princess, go fetch yourself. You are a woman of worth. You know, we, we, we talk about casual relationships. I'll hear youngsters saying, no, we are just in a casual relationship. You know, Dr. Darius Daniels says there's nothing like a casual relationship. Because in that casual relationship, that, let me give you the example. It's a casual relationship, but this guy keeps telling you that, you know what, you are not that beautiful. You know what, you can't even cook. You know what, you can't even do this. Those words are recorded in your subconscious mind. You wake up in the morning, you're thinking about that. Oh, it's a casual relationship, but he said, I can't cook. It's a casual relationship, but I'm not beautiful. I'm telling you, you're destroying yourself. There's nothing like a casual relationship. If it's either it's a relationship or it's not a relationship, choose today. Our entanglements, no, it's just, you know, he's just a friend with benefits. Youngsters, wake up and smell the coffee. It doesn't work like that. This is your life. If we talk about relationships, we are talking about life ships. These are the things that are going to destroy you. You will be old, but you'll still be thinking about the words that were said by this person you were in a casual relationship with, this person you were in an entanglement with, and then those things destroy us as women. Princesses, go fetch yourselves from your ex-boyfriends and your current boyfriends. Remember your worth. And let me talk about the moving in. There's a moving in together space. You know, you find youngsters saying, we are moving in together. We are moving in together. And these guys, our boys, you know, have this new tendency of giving keys. You know what? I have something to give to you. They'll give you the key, the key to the apartment. We are moving in together. I know that this will sound like I'm an old, old woman. Yes, I'm an old woman. But let me tell you something. Men always benefit from the moving in together. I don't care who says what. Men always benefit. There's one thing that there are two questions that I want you to ask yourself before you move in with a person. Question one, what is my plan? If you move in with a person, you should have a plan. Why are you moving in with a person? What is your plan? Two, what's in it for me? You have to ask yourself those questions because surely your boyfriend has asked himself that question. What is my plan? He has a plan. A plan of having someone who's going to do his laundry, someone who's going to cook for him, someone who'll just be there, take care of the house whilst he goes out with his friends. What's your plan? And what's in it for you? Because surely, let me tell you, this boyfriend who's giving you the key has calculated there's something in it for him. There's something in it for him. After five years, he comes and he says, I don't think this is working out. Mm, I think you need to move out. What do you do? What do you do? What was your plan? What was in it for you? Princesses, our young girls, young adults, our children, please, this moving in together, it's so fashionable, but it's destroying you. After some time, the person says, this thing is not working out. What do you do? What was your plan? Go fetch yourself. If you have to leave the apartment now, this minute, do it. Go fetch yourself. Let me talk about baby daddy, baby daddies. Our children have baby daddies. Some of our youngsters stay in relationships because there are kids. They persevere in abusive relationships with the hope that baby daddy dearest will recognize you and even take care of the child and marry you even 
because you have his child. Let me tell you something, Sissy. Go fetch it yourself. <laughs> if he's not planning on marrying you, he's not going to marry you. If he doesn't want to take care of the child, he's not going to take care of the child. You can involve the law if you want to. That's what you need to do. But do not persevere in a relationship just because he is your baby daddy. He's not your God. Go fetch yourself and see what you can do with your life. There is no need for you to stick with a person just because you have a child with a person. Move on with your life. Enjoy your life. You have everything within you to be the best person that you can. Don't allow this person to be your God just because you have a child with this person. If he wants to marry you, he will marry you. But he must, you mustn't uh, make this person marry you just because you have a child. You are going to suffer for the rest of your life. See, see, go fetch yourself. Trying to be loved and trying to get him to love your child at the expense of your sanity is not worth it. Go fetch yourself. He is not your God just because you have a child with him. Just because he's a baby daddy. No. Go fetch yourself, sissy. Can I talk about toxic, toxic friendships? Toxic friendships that we have with our female friends. Let me tell you something. You know there are friends who will always tell you that you are not worthy, you are unworthy, you are ugly. And some of these friends don't even see you in the relationship. It's always about them. Friend, did you see my car? Friend, did you see my dress? Friend, did you see this? Friend, can you see I'm beautiful? It's never about you. It's always about them. That relationship is toxic. You must live it. They make you feel small. They make you feel unimportant. They make you feel unnoticed. Go fetch yourself from such toxicity and then remove yourself from that relationship. See, see, go fetch yourself. There are better friends out there. Abantu Bazotini, we have a serious problem, queens. Abantu Bazotini. I want to do this Abantu Bazotini. Some of us cannot try new things because Abantu Bazotini. Zozibini Tunes in Miss South Africa slash Miss Universe said to us as women, women, you need to go and occupy space. There is space for you. Go out there and occupy space. Abantu Bazotini are holding us back for us not to move. See, see, go fetch yourself. You know, if you can look around looking for Abantu Bazotini, there's no one. What are their names? Abantu Bazotini. I want to go back to university. Abantu Bazotini. I want to start a business. Abantu Bazotini. I want to do this for my parents. Abantu Bazotini. Who are these people? Where are these people? Imaginary people. Sisi, fetch yourself from Abantu Bazotini. They don't even care that you exist. Fetch yourself. Go fetch yourself from Abantu Bazotini. If it means starting your life afresh, start your life afresh. It's your life anyway. It's not their lives. The last one that I want to look at, I think I've taken a lot of time now. Addictions. Ladies, I want to talk about addictions. You know, um, the above mentioned points just show us how challenging our lives are as women and some of us want to numb the pain i really don't want to take for granted that we have so much pain because of our marriages because of our uh, divorces because of our boyfriends because of our ex-boyfriends we have so many the journey of life is too long we have so many pains we have so many aches so some of us resort to alcohol drink alcohol because you want to numb the pain you take drugs because you want to numb the pain honestly i'm not taking for granted that sometimes it's too much but i want to say to you if you are listening to this message and you can still feel some power within you to leave alcohol and to leave drugs i'm begging you begging you from the depths of my heart because nothing good will come out of alcohol abusing alcohol nothing good will come out of abusing drugs go seek help sissy mama go seek help 
if you can still feel the power that I can still do this goal seek help. If you are next to somebody who is addicted because of the pains and the aches, queens, can you please help one another? A lot of us are abusing alcohol, abusing drugs because of the pain, we are trying to numb the pain. If you can, sis, go fetch yourself from alcohol, fetch yourself from addiction. I'm saying this with the, you know, my heart is paining right now because I know of a lot of women, some women my age, they are numbing the pain with drugs and with alcohol. Sis, fetch yourself and I pray to God that God will help you fetch yourself. Nothing good will come out of that. And let me tell you something. One lady once said to me, the wrong mentalities, if we can just go fetch ourselves from the wrong mentalities. One lady said to me, Kosi, I can't wait for the day when I'll just die and this man will be left with the kids and he will then realize how important I was in his life. My heart was so sore because I'm saying to myself, if this person is abusing you now, do you think he will care if you die? He won't care. You leave your kids because you want to show this person that you are important to them. Let's say for some reason, this person realizes after you've, you've, you've died that you are important. Are you going to resurrect? You are not. So addictions, addictions, ladies, wrong mentalities. Let's go fetch ourselves. Go look for help. Find a coach, find a psychologist for you to be helped. We understand the pain is too much. The hurt is too much. The words that were said to us are frustrating us. They are destroying us. But ladies, please go fetch yourself. If you still can, seek help and fetch yourself. We understand the depths of the problems. But please seek help and fetch yourself. This is just pain in my heart. I know this is not the best of times to be talking about these issues because we have COVID-19, we are facing deaths, we are sick. But ladies, I felt in my heart that we need to discuss this. Some of us uh, realized during lockdown that the relationships that we thought we had were just a lie because everything is now falling apart. May I encourage you ladies, leave toxic relationships, leave. There's nothing you can do with a toxic relationship. Leave a toxic relationship. Fetch yourself. Dearest queen, fetch yourself. Leave. South African queens, beautiful queens, remember, it is better to start afresh and live a happy, fulfilling life than spend the rest of your life resuscitating a dead relationship until you yourself die it is not worth it it is not worth it ladies go fetch yourself find the inner strength within you go fetch yourself if you want more of this please tune into my youtube channel the name of my channel is noma courses women transformation channel i have more content there but ladies, find strength within to go fetch yourself. Happy Women's Day. May this day fulfill you. May this day show you your worth. Remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are royalty. You are a queen. Thank you, queens. Mm -hmm.